Good afternoon and welcome. My name is uh, Dan Correa. I'm Senior Advisor for Innovation Policy here at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you today to our White House Smart Cities Forum. We've got a terrific agenda on tap. Um, we're going to be talking about some new announcements about next steps, and we're also going to have some time to brainstorm uh, some things that might be done in the future. So uh, we'd like to jump right into the agenda. Uh, we're going to kick off with a keynote uh, from the science advisor to the president and, um, and the director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, Dr. John Holdren. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Holdren. Well, thanks, Dan, and thank you also for all the hard work that you and your partners inside and outside the federal government have put into this initiative. It's really been an extraordinary lift, and it's coming to fruition with this, uh, with this launch today. Uh, we really have an amazing group of leaders here today to discuss smart cities. We've got representatives, obviously, from the federal government, the research community, city governments, civil society, the commercial technology sector. Uh, I want to acknowledge particularly two mayors who took time out of their busy schedules to be with us today, Mayor Pete Buttigieg of South Bend, Indiana, and Mayor Bill Peduto of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for being here. But thank you all for being here. And let me welcome you on behalf of President Obama to the White House. Uh, the President, I can assure you, is personally very interested in this initiative. Uh, he recognizes the potential of the smart cities idea to uh, transform energy and resource use in our cities to improve the quality of life for our city's inhabitants. And he's looking forward to hearing about the outcome of, uh, of this session. At the risk of the converted preaching to the converted, I want to spend just a couple of minutes holding forth on why the president and his administration believe that this topic is so important. First of all, 54% of the world's people live in cities. That figure is projected to grow to 66% by 2050. And clearly, if researchers and public officials, citizens and companies can develop effective solutions to the challenges that all these people living in cities are facing and will face, it's going to have a huge positive impact, both in this country and around uh, the world. The products and services that are needed to build smart cities clearly could also serve as an important export market for U.S. companies, creating high-wage jobs for Americans. The second point is that technology is in the process of creating new opportunities, new opportunities to reduce traffic congestion, to fight crime, to foster economic development, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and to make local governments, as well of of course, as the federal government, more open, more responsive, and more efficient. Uh, around the world, cities are beginning to harness the powers of sensors, the power of engaged citizens equipped with smartphones, cloud computing, high-speed networks, data analytics. All of this is enabling citizens, nonprofits, businesses, and public officials to make better decisions and to prevent problems as opposed to just reacting to them. Third, these technologies can also create the foundation for a new urban science to enable a deeper understanding of cities and how they work and what it will take to make them more livable, sustainable, equitable, and resilient. And finally, a new generation of technologists is committed to helping local governments embrace 21st century technologies for these purposes by participating in hackathons, organizations like Code for America, they're helping to make government services easier to access and easier to benefit from. And that's why I'm particularly pleased to announce that the administration is launching today a Smart Cities initiative with an initial federal investment of over $160 million with important commitments adding to it from cities, universities, foundations, and companies. And clearly, although today other speakers will provide more details on those commitments, there are certainly a couple of them that I want to highlight. The National Science Foundation is investing in the fundamental research and research infrastructure to support this effort. NSF, for example, will be providing a $3 million grant to the University of Chicago to build a 500-node network 
capable of measuring the physical environment of urban areas at the city block scale. The National Institute of Standards and Technology Global City Teams Challenge will encourage teams to set smart city goals and work with companies such as IBM, AT&T, and Cisco to develop, deploy, and evaluate smart city technologies. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Energy, the Department of Transportation, and the Department of Commerce are all investing in smart city applications. Those projects are going to help increase the effectiveness of first responders, improve the energy efficiency of buildings, reduce traffic congestion, foster regional innovation, and improve air quality monitoring. With support from the MacArthur Foundation, more than 20 cities and universities are forming the Metro Lab Network. Participants have already committed to launch more than 60 smart city projects over the next year. A new partnership called Envision America will give 10 cities the opportunity to workshop new approaches to energy, water, waste and air challenges with industry and academic experts. And today's announcements are just the beginning. The President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, which I chair, is currently examining how a variety of technologies can enhance the future of cities and the quality of life for urban residents, and more recommendations from that group will be forthcoming on how we can build on the administration smart cities initiative that we're launching today. So again, I really want to thank everybody here for participating in this forum and for the high impact commitments that many of you are making today. I look forward to working with you to make this initiative a success. I know it will be. And I hope that you'll consider helping us expand the coalition of federal agencies, cities, universities, companies, foundations, and nonprofits that are involved. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce one of the main leaders of this initiative, Dr. France Cordova, the director of the National Science Foundation. France. Thank you very much, Dr. Holdren, and good afternoon, everyone. It's really a, really a pleasure to be here. Uh, this initiative uh, is, uh, of course, important to us as scientists and engineers and business people and, and leaders in all sectors, but it also has a very uh, personal uh, appeal to us when we consider where some of our our children and our friends are now gravitating towards. I, I think it's amazing as a mom who raised two children in the suburbs that they both as young millennials are living with their partners in the heart of great big cities. And uh, they are smart and they are connected and they're going to be uh, a big part of the initiatives that we put forward. I also want to join my colleagues in welcoming the mayors of, uh, in Pennsylvania and Indiana, having been a former faculty member at both Penn State and Purdue University, I am not impartial to the success of those states. Well, I'm happy uh, indeed to join my colleagues from the Office of Science and Technology Policy and from across the federal government and all the academic researchers, corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, and civic organizers who have come from across the country to be with us here in this moment. Today, as Dr. Holdren said, we embark on a journey to unlock smart new solutions to challenges that are important to all of us, such as optimizing our energy usage, reducing traffic congestion, providing critical services, and improving access to education. Nearly 30 years ago, building on earlier federal investments, the National Science Foundation initiated NSFNet, a general purpose research network that sought to link researchers to the nation's supercomputing facilities. And who could have envisioned the advances that we've witnessed since then? Through additional public funding and private industry partnerships, our investments in NSFNet help lead today's internet. And the internet, in turn, has enabled data and knowledge sharing that has accelerated the pace of discovery in every field, enabled us to achieve many national priorities, and helped us grow our nation's economic competitiveness. All of that 
has happened uh, while we've been uh, vigorous contributors to this endeavor. And today, we can see we're on the cusp of another important revolution. Nearly everything is becoming connected to the internet. Not just our computers and our smartphones, but also our television sets, our cars, and even our kitchen appliances, lights, and thermostats. I don't know about you, but I'm afraid to leave the house that is just going to go on buzzing on its own, <laughs> doing a goodness knows what. We call it the Internet of Things, and it's giving rise to an exciting new set of opportunities for furthering science, engineering, and society well into the future. The effective integration of network computing systems, physical devices, data sources, and critical infrastructure, all with humans in the loop, and that's extremely important in all of this, is it's meant to improve the quality of life in cities and communities all across the nation. Our technologies will help uh, define what's possible, and it is the humans and their response to it which will help it uh, indeed make it possible to um, uh, make uh, significant progress. Steve Case, the noted entrepreneur who founded and led American Online, describes this emerging revolution in the context of three waves of the internet. The first wave, spanning the 1980s and 90s, was about building the internet, assembling the infrastructures, connections, and awareness that ushered in a connected world. And that's where NSFNet had its role. The second wave from the turn of the century until now has been bi about building on top of the internet. The focus moved from connecting people to creating new ways for us to access the information and each other. We're now at the trough before a third wave, during which we'll integrate the internet into everyday life in increasingly seamless and ubiquitous ways. Riding this wave will be about forging partnerships to transform the economy's largest sectors. Those partnerships will be in energy, in transportation, in education, and they will be in ways that impact all of us as individuals. NSF is contributing to this emerging revolution and to the broader vision of smart and connected communities in many ways, and that's why I'm glad to be here this afternoon. We're pleased to announce today more than $35 million in new investments that will help to intelligently and effectively design, adapt, and manage the smart and connected communities of the future. So I want to highlight just a few of these investments. First, NSF is issuing approximately $10 million in new cyber physical systems research projects with a focus on smart and connected communities, supported in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security, NASA, the National Institutes of Health, and the Department of Transportation. The Interagency Cyber Physical Systems Program, led by NSF, funds research that develops the principles, methodologies, and tools needed to deeply embed computation, communications, and control into physical systems. Second, NSF is announcing $12 million to new projects to foster communities of practice, or living labs, that will provide mechanisms to scale up next generation internet application prototypes impacting healthcare, energy, transportation, education, and learning, and public safety across our nation's cities and regions. This includes awards to US Ignite, I noticed they're here today, a public-private partnership spanning over 40 cities and communities across the nation, and the Mozilla Foundation, the nonprofit organization dedicated to openness, innovation, and participation in the internet to catalyze an application innovation ecosystem that will power the way to tomorrow's smart and connected communities. And third, 
NSF is issuing an award of more than $3 million, as Dr. Holdren mentioned, as an example, to the University of Chicago to support the creation of a new instrument called the Array of Things in the city of Chicago. The Array of Things will be the first research infrastructure to allow researchers to rapidly deploy sensors, embedded systems, computing, and communication systems at scale in an urban environment. Our additional investments include awards that enable NSF-funded researchers to participate in the 2015 National Institute of Standards and Technology Global Cities Team Challenge, a new award to establish a research coordination network to stimulate novel international research on how to integrate data from physical sensors, social media, and other sources, new awards to enhance the understanding and design of safe, secure, and resilient interdependent critical infrastructure systems and processes, Awards to develop next generation healthcare solutions to enable patient centered care and wellness. And finally, awards that facilitate academic and industry partnerships in support of integrating breakthrough research discoveries into new service system. So I think you would agree that's a big menu. Collectively, the investments that we're announcing today build on a foundation of long-term commitments by NSF to unleash the smartness that is inherent in all of a city's residents. I'm also pleased to announce that NSF is issuing a Dear Colleague letter today to, uh, that will announce the continuation uh, of support of research to help make smart and connected communities a reality. This Dear Colleague letter is a joint effort of five of our directorates, Computer and Information Science and Engineering, Education and Human Resources, Engineering, Geosciences, and Social, Behavioral, and Economic Sciences Directorate. And most of the leadership of those directorates is with us today. That speaks very highly to the interdisciplinary nature of the research questions in this space, as well as NSF's unique role in convening the breadth of science and engineering community. The Dear Colleague letter encourages academic researchers to collaborate with industry, nonprofits, local governments, and anchor institutions, such as schools, libraries, and hospitals, to submit, quote, high risk, high reward uh, endeavors. This work, really the hard work and dedication from many of you in this room today will give rise to transformational approaches for conducting interdisciplinary science and engineering, to an ecosystem of innovation and sharing, and to new ways for how we work and learn and interact with one another. Together, we hope to ride that third wave and cultivate increasingly smart and connected communities for the future. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Khalil. I'm the Deputy Director in the White House Office of science and technology policy. And at the risk of uh, sounding like I'm at the Oscars, I have a lot of people that I would like to thank. Uh, I'm gonna be providing a little bit uh, more information on uh, all of the uh, organizations, many of the organizations, both inside and outside the federal government that have stepped up and are making commitments today uh, to advance uh, smart cities. And I wanna start uh, with the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program, which coordinates uh, the $4.1 billion that the federal government invests uh, in information technology research and development. They are releasing a new framework today which will help guide federal agency investments and uh, spur additional outside collaborations that are related to smart cities and connected communities. The Department of Transportation is announcing approximately $40 million in connected vehicle pilots today 
including in Tampa and Manhattan, which will pilot connected vehicle technologies and vehicle data in urban areas to improve safety and reduce traffic congestion. The uh, Commerce Department's uh, Economic and Development Administration will focus their $10 million Regional Innovation uh, Strategies Program on research commercialization and entrepreneurship, including supporting startups with an impact uh, on the community's uh, most pressing uh, problems. The also part of the uh, Commerce Department census is taking additional steps to promote the use of their open source city software development kit, which will make it easier for application developers to use census data for the, for the development of smart city applications. Uh, as Dr. Holder mentioned, the Environmental Protection Agency is going to provide funding to experiment with new approaches for air quality monitoring that take advantage of low-cost sensors. On the private sector side, uh, Envision America is announcing a new competition uh, for cities that will allow up to 10 city leaders the opportunity uh, to workshop their energy, water, waste, and air challenges with experts and develop detailed plans for new initiatives using innovative technologies. The new effort is supported by Accelerated Innovations, Autodesk, Bank of America, Cisco, Duke Energy, DGE, uh, ITRON, uh, Landis and Gyre, Microsoft, and Qualcomm Technologies. And this builds on uh, Envision Charlotte, uh, which is uh, pursuing a goal uh, to reduce energy usage in their central business district by uh, 20%. Uh, Chicago is launching an effort called City Digital. This is a partnership that brings together the city with uh, industry and academia. They're going to be pursuing projects in green infrastructure and the monitoring of underground infrastructure. The Dallas Innovation Alliance is launching an effort that will bring together uh, industry and other stakeholders to develop smart city approaches to infrastructure, mobility, and connected living. Uh, in Detroit, uh, IBM is deploying a Smarter Cities Challenge team in Detroit to design a strategy for cost-efficient, sustainable removal, recycling, and reuse of debris from abandoned and neglected properties. The National League of Cities is announcing the winners of their multi-city innovation campaign, which is a program that uh, matches civic tech companies with an audience of 25 local governments, uh, which uh, provide feedback on and test beds for innovative new technologies to deploy in their communities. Uh, Siemens USA is uh, making their city performance tool available in the cities of the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance, uh, which are uh, seven cities across nine different countries. This software model will allow these communities to dynamically model the changes required to evaluate how specific building transportation and energy technologies can help them achieve their environmental goals. And uh, in Northern California, in the Bay Area, a public-private partnership is improving security for the next Super Bowl. Uh, for the first time, law enforcement, NFL, security, transit authority, and city leaders are going to have real-time access to the same security data, thanks to an effort involving the San Francisco 49ers, the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority, the City of Santa Clara, the Santa Clara Police Department, uh, Arena Geographics, and Allied uh, Telesis. Uh, so those, those are just a few of the uh, public and private uh, initiatives that are being unveiled today. Uh, and as Dr. Holden said, I hope that you'll consider working with us to uh, not only implement all these great initiatives, uh, but to figure out ways in which we can learn from each other, to take advantage of our laboratories of democracy, and over time, increase the number of individuals and organizations, both inside and outside the government, uh, that are, are involved in promoting uh, smart and connected communities. So next up, um, we're going to have uh, a panel to look at this from the uh, university perspective. Uh, so can I uh, welcome uh, Elena Harkness, who is the uh, program director with the uh, MacArthur Foundation, which is supporting the Metro uh, Lab Network to the stage. I, I can, I've got one change in the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Thanks very much, Tom. So we, we've unfortunately got one of our panelists, I believe, Anthony Townsend, is, is still stuck outside at the gate. 
So I think we just like to be nimble here uh, and go ahead and jump into two of the lightning talks that we have planned. Just short, uh, lightning fast pitches on uh, new announcements that, that were, are being uh, announced today. So the, the first one I believe that we have lined up should be um, uh, City SDK, uh, Jeff Mizell from the Census Bureau and Ashley McClelland from Waffle I.O. Please welcome them to the stage. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Meisel, Presidential Innovation Fellow at the U.S. Census Bureau, and my co-presenter is Ashley McClellan, who works at an enterprise lean startup in CA Technologies called Waffle.io, and she, she brings a lot of expertise in agile and lean startup. I'm also joined in today's forum by our CTO of the U.S. Census Bureau, Avi Bender, who's the executive sponsor of the City SDK project, and we're very excited to share with you three pillars on how we are incubating ideas from civic tech communities across the nation that can play a role in smart cities. First, at the heart of this initiative is the existing tech ecosystems that already reside in your communities. These include the mixture of academia, industry, open government, and innovation hubs. The reason we keep this community front and center is to make sure that the problem definitions and solutions being built are driven to maximize impact in a given city. We proved this model earlier this summer with our national challenge that produced an incredible array of app prototypes in areas such as health access, social justice, education, and Internet of Things. Next is improved access to government data. This ensures that software developers can be as successful as, successful as possible. And the census has been leading this as a cross-agency effort. And we call it the City SDK your software development kit, and it's really a platform to build your apps on top of. This bridges the gap between open data at the federal, state, and local level. And it improves access to the data and makes it more interoperable. What used to take developers days or weeks in order to build their first prototype, we've seen has reduced to just a matter of hours or over the course of a weekend. Now I'll turn it over to Ashley to talk about the third pillar, which is the playbook. Thanks, Jeff. As Jeff mentioned, communities have these built-in ecosystems that can be tapped into. And now, with the City SDK, they have a programming framework which improves how open government data can be incorporated into their applications. The third piece is an Agile playbook that we are excited to launch later this month at the annual Code for America Summit in Oakland. Its creation is a collaboration between Census, Code for America, and CA Technologies Waffle.io, which is a free Agile tool for open source projects that use GitHub. Waffle.io and the Agile playbook were created as part of CA's corporate social responsibility mission to help make Code for America's brigade program more effective. The objective of the playbook is to provide an innovation process that can be made replicable from city to city at scale at events like hackathons. The playbook takes a problem-centric approach to make sure solutions are meeting citizens' most pressing needs. This is the same type of process that leading companies use to create software, closely aligned with the practices defined in the U.S. Digital Services Playbook. The Agile Playbook allows teams within cities that have the Code for America structure, these are called brigades as most of you know to better manage their innovation process, including the city, smart city solutions that are being driven by the community. A great example of how this works is from an event we held this past weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. We started by engaging all the key ecosystem participants in the community, including academia, <coughs> academia, industry, government, and innovation hubs. Over the course of two days, teams were able to use city SDK to get census data and combine that with state data and local data to work towards solutions in areas such as veteran services, health, and education. During the event, we used the Agile Playbook to walk teams through the, through the completion of five design sprints to validate their ideas and help test hypotheses. Our hope is when teams leave this type of event, they are armed with an innovation process that they can use to take their solutions from prototypes to real world implementation. So just in closing, if you'd like to help deploy this in your community, talk to us later this afternoon on how you can get involved with either the technical portion with the City SDK open source project or through the data outreach vehicles like the Code for America playbook. Thank you.
Thank you so much. All right, next up we have another lightning talk. This one from Jeff Merritt, who's the Director of Innovation uh, for the City of New York, and he'll be talking about a new announcement on uh, Neighborhood Innovation Labs. Please welcome him to the stage. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Merritt. I'm the Director of Innovation for the City of New York. That's part of our Mayor's Office of Tech and Innovation. And I'm joined here uh, today by two colleagues, uh, one David Guilford of New York City Economic Development Corporation, and also Dr. Uh, Constantine Constanosta from uh, the New York, New York University Center for Urban Science and Progress, or CUSP. So yesterday morning at about 10.30 a.m., something remarkable happened in New York. Uh, we opened our first subway station in 25 years. And what's particularly unique there is that we're actually birthing an entirely new neighborhood on the far west side of Manhattan. And the developer has teamed up with CUSP to make this New York City's first quantified community. And what that means is this is going to be a smart community that's built from the bottom up so that the data collection and analytics are not only going to drive efficiencies in energy and water consumption, but also things like improving air quality, public safety, mobility, public health. And so today, building on these efforts, we're actually launching an entirely new initiative to make sure that these cutting edge technologies aren't simply deployed in places like Midtown Manhattan, but actually reach out into the five boroughs of New York City. And we're doing this with an explicit focus on reaching traditionally underserved communities where we believe these technology investments can have the greatest impact on quality of life. So through this network of neighborhood labs across the five boroughs, we're going to transform our city streets, our parks, and our public spaces into plat a platform for innovation. This network's going to leverage the mayor's effort to build citywide Wi-Fi and strengthen collaboration with our city's burgeoning tech ecosystem. Now, community residents, not multinational corporations, are going to be driving these neighborhood innovation labs. And what that means is we're going to partner with community organizations to define the most pressing problems, and we're going to challenge our tech community to put forward new innovative solutions. And this builds on successes that we've had with our Big Apps Challenge and our recent call for innovations on broadband. So in neighborhoods like Red Hook, Brooklyn, where uh, limited transportation can provide a day-to-day -day headache for residents, we're going to focus on issues uh, to improve or decrease commuting time. In areas like the South Bronx, issues like air quality and public safety may be top concerns. And to ease private sector collaboration and stimulate economic development, We'll be standardizing our testing protocols. We'll be streamlining processes for launching new pilots and defining new standards to protect the privacy of New Yorkers. So this is our vision for New York. It's a vision where a smart city is an equitable city. And we hope that other cities around the country and around the world will follow our lead to make sure that as we see the proliferation of new technologies, that this becomes a tool and a force for tackling, not exacerbating inequality. Thank you. <laughs>